Welcome to Maths Companion. In the last video, we have discussed the section Interest for Interest. We have seen the difference between simple interest and compound interest. In the case of simple interest, interest is obtained only for the principal amount. But in the case of compound interest, interest is obtained both for the principal amount and for the previous year's interest. There was a homework. Let us do it now. The simple interest at 5% got for a certain amount after 2 years is 200 rupees. If interest is compounded annually, what would be the interest for the same amount at the same rate after 2 years? Given that interest rate is 5% and after 2 years, the simple interest obtained is 200 rupees. First of all, we have to find the amount deposited. Then we have to find the compound interest for the same amount at the same rate after 2 years. Let us take the amount deposited as P. Rate of interest is 5% and given that after 2 years simple interest is 200 rupees. To calculate the simple interest, we have to multiply the amount by rate of interest and number of years. That is simple interest is equal to P into 5 by 100 into 2 and given that simple interest is 200 so that is equal to 200 5 into 2 is 10 so this can be written as p into 10 by 100 and that is equal to 200 one zero can be cancelled from both numerator and denominator so the left hand side can be written as p into 1 by 10 and that is equal to 200 let us take 1 by 10 on the other side of the equation. Then into 1 by 10 becomes divided by 1 by 10. And when we divide a number by 1 by 10, we have to multiply the number by the reciprocal of 1 by 10 or by 10. That means P is equal to 200 into 10 and that is equal to 2000. That means the amount deposited is 2000 rupees and after 2 years 2000 rupees will give 200 rupees as simple interest at the rate of 5%. Now we have to find the compound interest. This is the amount deposited at the beginning. So we can consider it as the first year's balance. Now we have to find the first year's interest. Interest rate is 5%. So first year's interest is 2000 into 5 by 100. Two zeros can be cancelled from both numerator and denominator. Then we get 20 into 5 and that is equal to 100. That is first year's interest is 100 rupees. Second year's balance is first year's balance plus first year's interest or 2000 plus 100 and that is equal to 2100 rupees. Now we have to find second year's interest that is equal to 2100 into 5 by 100. Again, two zeros can be cancelled from both numerator and denominator. Then we get 21 into 5 and that is equal to 105. We have to find the compound interest after two years. First year's interest is 100 rupees and second year's interest is 105 rupees. So after two years, the total interest obtained is 100 plus 105 or 205 rupees. Today, let us learn the next section, another method. Consider this problem once again, which we have done in the previous video. First year's balance is 10,000 rupees. First year's interest is 10,000 into 5 by 100 or 500 rupees. Second year's balance is 10,000 plus 500 or 10,500 rupees. Second year's interest is 10,500 into 5 by 100 or 525 rupees and the amount after 2 years is 10,500 plus 525 or 11,025 rupees. Let us look at the method of computation again. First year's interest is 5 by 100 of 10,000. The 500 rupees got thus is added to 10,000 to get 10,500 rupees. And the second year's interest is 5 by 100 of this. This interest 525 rupees is added to 10,500 rupees 
to make 11,025 rupees, which is the amount got after two years. Suppose the account is continued for one more year. To get the amount after three years, 5 by 100 of 11,025 rupees is to be added to it. Thus, after each year, 5 by 100 of the current balance is added to it. Suppose the current balance is x rupees. Then, 5 by 100 of x must be added to it. We can write this as x plus 5 by 100 into x or x into 1 plus 5 by 100. So, instead of adding 5 by 100 of the balance each year, we need only to multiply by 1 plus 5 by 100. Therefore, amount after 1 year is 10,000 into 1 plus 5 by 100. Or second year's balance is 10,000 into 1 plus 5 by 100. Now, to get the third year's balance or amount after 2 years, we have to multiply this again by 1 plus 5 by 100. 1 plus 5 by 100 into 1 plus 5 by 100 is 1 plus 5 by 100 all square. So the amount after 2 years is 10,000 into 1 plus 5 by 100 all square. Now to get the amount after 3 years, we have to multiply this again by 1 plus 5 by 100. 1 plus 5 by 100 all square into 1 plus 5 by 100 is 1 plus 5 by 100 all raised to 3. So the amount after 3 years is 10,000 into 1 plus 5 by 100 all raised to 3. Continuing like this, we can say the amount after n years is 10,000 into 1 plus 5 by 100 all raised to n. Here, 10,000 is the amount deposited at the beginning. Usually, we denote it by the letter P. And 5 is the rate of interest. It is usually denoted by R. So, we can say, if P rupees is invested in a scheme giving R percent interest compounded annually, then the amount after N years is P into 1 plus R by 100 all raised to N. We can calculate the amount after a certain number of years using this equation. Now, let us do some problems. First problem. Nancy deposited 15,000 rupees in a bank, which pays 9% interest compounded annually. How much would she get after 2 years? The amount deposited is 15,000 rupees. That is, P is 15,000. Rate of interest is 9%. That is, R is 9%. We have to find the amount after 2 years. That is, N is 2. The amount after N years is P into 1 plus R by 100 all raised to N. Let us replace each letter by the corresponding value. P is 15,000, R is 9 and N is 2. So, we can write this as 15,000 into 1 plus 9 by 100 all square. First of all, let us add 1 and 9 by 100. How can we add it? 9 by 100 means 9 out of 100. Suppose there is a cake. It is divided into 100 equal parts. Then each piece is called 1 by 100 part of the cake. So when we take 9 pieces together, it is 9 by 100. Now suppose another such cake is divided into 100 pieces. And if you take all the 100 pieces, you will get 100 out of 100 or the full cake. So, 1 can be written as 100 by 100. So, 1 plus 9 by 100 is equal to 100 by 100 plus 9 by 100. Now, the denominators are same. So, we can add the numerators together and write the same denominator. That is, this is equal to 109 divided by 100. Now, without actually calculating like this, we can easily say 1 plus 9 by 100 is equal to 109 by 100. What is 1 plus 10 by 100? That is 110 by 100. What is 1 plus 20 by 100? That is equal to 120 by 100. What is 1 plus 25 by 100? 
that is 125 by 100. What is 100 plus 5 by 100? That is 105 by 100. So now onwards, we will not calculate like this. We will directly write the result. So this can be written as 15,000 into 109 by 100 all square. Now, 109 by 100 all square means 109 by 100 into 109 by 100. So we can write this as 15,000 into 109 by 100 into 109 by 100. Now we can cancel two zeros from numerator and denominator. One more zero remains. So we can cancel one zero from numerator and denominator again. We cannot cancel this zero because cancelling one zero from numerator and denominator means we are dividing both numerator and denominator by 10. What remains now? 15 into 109 into 109 divided by 10. So first of all, let us multiply 109 by 109 and that is equal to 11,881. Now we have to multiply this by 15 and that is equal to 1,78,215. Now we have to divide it by 10. Then we get 17,821.5. So simplifying we get 17,821.5. Now what is the meaning of this 17,821 rupees and 50 paise? When there is 50 paise or more than that, we will get 17,822 rupees. If there is only less than 50 paise, we will get only 17,821 rupees. So we can say, Amount after 2 years is 17,822 rupees. Now let us do the problems on page 92. First problem. Anas deposited 20,000 rupees in a bank which pays 6% interest compounded annually. How much would he get back after 3 years? The amount deposited is 20,000 that is P is 20,000. Rate of interest is 6% that is R is 6%. We have to find the amount after 3 years, that is n is 3. Amount after n years is p into 1 plus r by 100 all raised to n. Let us replace each letter by the corresponding value. p is 20,000, r is 6 and n is 3. So this can be written as 20,000 into 1 plus 6 by 100 all raised to 3. What is 1 plus 6 by 100? That is 106 by 100. So this can be written as 20,000 into 106 by 100 all raised to 3. 106 by 100 all raised to 3 means 106 by 100 into 106 by 100 into 106 by 100. So this can be written as 20,000 into 106 by 100 into 106 by 100 into 106 by 100. We can cancel two zeros from numerator and denominator. Again, we can cancel two zeros from numerator and denominator. What remains now? 2 into 106 into 106 into 106 divided by 100. So let us multiply 106 by 106 at first. And we get 11,236. Again, we have to multiply this by 106. And we get 11,91,016. We have to multiply it again by 2. We get 23,82,032. Now we have to divide it by 100. We get 23,822.32. Now this means 23,820 rupees and 32 paise. Since this is less than 50 paise, she will get only 23 rupees and 822 rupees. That is amount after 3 years is 23,820 rupees. Second problem. Dia deposited 8,000 rupees in a bank which gives 10% interest compounded annually. After 2 years, she withdrew 5,000 rupees. After 1 more year, how much would she have in her account? Here, she withdraws 5,000 rupees after 2 years. So we can use the equation to find the amount after 2 years. Then we have to subtract the amount which she has withdrawn. Then we have to calculate the balance. So first of all, let us calculate the amount after 2 years. The amount deposited is 8000 rupees, that is P is 8000. 
rate of interest is 10 percent that is r is 10 percent first of all let us find the amount after two years that is n equal to 2 amount after n years is p into 1 plus r by 100 all raised to n p is 8000 r is 10 and n is 2 so this can be written as 8000 into 1 plus 10 by 100 all raised to 2 1 plus 10 by 100 is 110 by 100 so this can be written as 8000 into 110 by 100 all square. 110 by 100 all square is 110 by 100 into 110 by 100. So this can be written as 8000 into 110 by 100 into 110 by 100. Let us cancel two zeros from both numerator and denominator. Again there are zeros in numerator and denominator. So we can cancel two more zeros from both numerator and denominator. What remains now? 80 into 11 into 11. So let us first multiply 80 by 11 and we get 880. Again multiply it by 11. We get 9680. So the amount after 2 years is 9680 rupees. She withdrew 5000 rupees after 2 years. Then what will be the balance in her account? That is 9680 minus 5000 or 4680 rupees. Now she deposit this amount for one more year. So let us find third year's interest. Third year's balance is 4680 rupees and rate of interest is 10 percent. So third year's interest is 4680 into 10 by 100. We can cancel zeros from numerator and denominator. So we get 468 into 1 by 1 or 468. Third year's interest is 468 rupees and third year's balance is 4680 rupees. Then what is the amount after 3 years? That is 4680 plus 468 or 5148 rupees. That is, after 3 years, the amount in her account is 5148 rupees. Now, a homework. Varun took out a loan of 25,000 rupees from a bank, which charges 11% interest compounded annually. He paid back 10,000 rupees after 2 years. How much should he pay after one more year to settle the loan? We shall discuss the remaining part in the next video. Till then, bye.